I'd like to call the order, call to order the, the meeting of the Kansas City, Kansas Community College Board of Trustees, April 14, 2015, meeting to order and ask for a roll call. I'm sorry, Pledge of Allegiance. Doug, would you leave us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now we'll have the roll call. Rusty Ash. Here. Trustee Bridenthal. Trustee Daniels. Here. Trustee Flender. Trustee Maddox. Here. Trustee Rios. Here. Trustee Townsend. Here. All right, next we're going to have the, the swearing in of our newly elected trustees, uh, Don Ash, Clyde Townsend, and Ray Daniels. And performing the ceremony is, is our general counsel, Mr. Darrell Wynn. Where, can we just meet right uh, Where do you want to uh, You can do it by the microphone so they can hear you. <laughs> This microphone. Trustees, uh, do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Kansas, and faithfully and honestly perform the duties of your office as a member of the Kansas City, Kansas Community College Board of Trustees, Wyandotte County, Kansas, so help you God. I do. Therefore, based upon the authority vested in me, you here now have taken the oath of office as a community college uh, trustee. I'm going to ask you now to sign and date the uh, oath of office that I have here before me. And welcome, gentlemen, back to where you were. Thank you. As for a motion to approve the uh, amended agenda. Been moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the amended agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion carried. Need a motion to approve the uh, March uh, 10th, 2015 meeting uh, minutes. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the March 10th. 2015 minutes all in favor aye. Aye. aye opposed motion carried audience to patrons and petitioners anyone wishing to speak to the board please give your name and your address and um, we're going to hold hold you to five minutes and your time starts now okay my name is Richard Mabian my address is 2035 Oakland KCK 66106. Uh, hello, board trustees. It's very good to see you again. Most of you know me very well. Uh, I think this the last time I was here, the only people that wasn't here is your president and I think the new C, uh, CFO <laughs> officer. Everyone else was pretty much here. I'm going to hand these seats out. I'll send them down. Yeah, who has told me I, he's monitoring my five minutes, so I got to talk <laughs> fast. Before, when I was here, you were very responsible for me being able to do the Breaking the Silence Conference. And as I told you the last time I was here, I thought we did a wonderful job, and we were able to actually make the environmental movement a issue in Kansas City, Kansas. Well, since that time, folks, as you can see by the shirt that I'm wearing, January, I was elected president of the NAACP. And so now I'm coming back to you again because I have another situation that I want to talk to you about. And this is more an event than it is a conference. It has to do with our Freedom Fund Banquet that's going to be coming up in August the 14th. 
of this year, August the 15th actually, and the sheet I'm handing you out is the person that I would like to be able to contract with to be our keynote speaker. That is, we had her here for the environmental movement, so she's familiar with Kansas City, but she's coming here. That is Booker T. Washington's great-granddaughter, and she just got our second book out, and I think that the book that she has written is one that if you haven't had a chance, now that you see the title of it on there, I would recommend that you read it. It was written for our young people. It wasn't written for you and I. You probably would go, oh, this is not my level of writing. But if you read this book, you will understand why the, the, the things we are encountering in this day and age with our young people, it was written for her. So when I asked God how I was supposed to talk to you all, so y'all in trouble, he, uh, I picked up this book to read it, and I ran into a section that said, my great-grandmother, Jane, was born a slave. She was stripped of her surname, her parents, and her freedom. She was raped. She didn't know her date of birth. She was robbed of a right to a formal education. She was illiterate. Yes, she was a rock. A rock whose love for her children never wavered. Thus she gave birth to the most influential and powerful black leader of this time, my great-grandfather Booker T. Washington. To me, and probably to my great-grandfather Booker T. Washington, his mother and my great-grandmother Jane would always remain the noblest embodiment of womanhood. That in my, as far as I'm concerned, is a reason for her, us to have her here. Yesterday I was in St. Louis at a funeral and ran into a young lady who very much needs to talk to this woman. And when you read the book and see how she pulled herself up from living in poverty, living in public housing, and living around drugs and violence in Oakland, California, to become the person that she is now and regaining her legacy as far as her family is concerned, you also will agree. We need this woman here. So the reason I'm talking to you, I need you to help me. I would like for you to help me, if you could, in bringing her. She's going before when we had the conference. You all were, a, were graciously covered me with five thousand dollars. For her coming in, I'm only going to need like thirty-five hundred. What she's going to be able to do, and what I wanted to be able to do, is to put on a weekend extravaganza. She'll have the we'll have the Freedom Fund fun on the Saturday night. Friday night, I want to be able to have what a meet and greet and a book signing and work with our colleges and universities and groups from all over the metropolitan area to have them come in and meet and greet this woman. We may charge the, high, the college students $10 to get in. We'll charge high school students $5. And I want to hold this at the former YWCA on 6th on and State that's just now in the process of being reopened. The reason I want my public housing moms and children to be able to walk there, I want them to be able to come meet this woman, and I need your help in being able to make that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Richard. Thank you, Richard. <coughs> Anyone else? 40 seconds speak to the board. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Kelly Newton. I'm the head men's basketball coach here. I wanted to step up and uh, present. We just got these flyers done on Monday. I wanted to present a fundraiser that we're doing for the men's basketball team that will uh, help the community as well. Uh, it's uh, Every Kid Matters uh, on Saturday, uh, April the 25th. Um, we're going to have a bunch of uh, people from our community, metropolitan area, that it, there will be some spoken word, there will be some uh, discussion about cyberbullying, team violence, peer pressure, racism, education, job trade, just kind of covering every avenue for our youth in our community. Uh, we have already reached out to a lot of high schools in Wyandotte County over in Missouri. Uh, we have some people going down to Lawrence and surrounding cities as well. And I have some flyers here that I will pass out to the board. Um, like I said, this is a fundraiser for our men's basketball program. The next day on the 26th, we're having an all-star game. Um, we're going to do this. This is the first annual. We want to do this every single year to bring awareness to our college, to our men's basketball program, uh, to help you know our youth in our community and things of that nature so um, just wanted to make that make the board aware make the community aware of this great event that is going to be going on um, later on uh, well next week I will have 
our complete list of people who's going to speak, who's going to perform, uh, things of that nature, because we're still building that list. It will run from 3 p.m. on Saturday to 9 p.m., starting out with speakers of different topics, uh, entertainment, and then it will be a sort of, sort of a party for the youth right there in the gym. We're having this in the gymnasium. Um, I think it's going to be a great event. We're kind of thinking outside the box for our fundraising efforts to where we can also uh, kill two birds with one stone and reach our community and our youth and things of that nature. So I will leave these flyers with the board and you can pass them out and I will be passing out flyers uh, via email and also uh, uh, door hangers for on cars and things of that nature in our parking lot. So uh, we want everybody to be aware and then come also come out and support our men's basketball program as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. <coughs> Anyone else wishing to speak to the board? Good morning, trustees of the Kansas City, Kansas Community College. My name is Murray Anderson, and the name of my company is TaylorMade Visions. And my purpose of coming before you this morning is to actually request an opportunity to come before you again. Um, we've been working with the workforce development uh, arm of the Kansas City, Kansas Community College, as well as the Center for Entrepreneurship. Okay. And with that said, what we're trying to accomplish is to provide the ways and means in order for the Kansas City, Kansas Community College to in fact expand its Center for Entrepreneurship campus to downtown Kansas City, Kansas in the 66101 zip code. Some of the, well the director of the Center for Entrepreneurship has been engaged in working with an initiative that I also work with and have been working with for approximately the last two years that's called and referred to as the Econ Avenue, which is the green light for economic empowerment of the Federal Reserve Bank of Kansas City. It is a very important strategic um, economic development and community development initiative that is the model for growing your own business in the underserved markets. So the my purpose here is to share with you and to offer to the Kansas City Kansas Community College an opportunity to expand its footprint to downtown Kansas City to be able to address the underserved communities' business needs and entrepreneurial needs to expand and grow businesses and create opportunities in the underserved market and in fact build wealth. With that said, we have uh, put in front of Dr. Lindau a lease agreement and also um, we have and we are offering a contract to the Center for Entrepreneurship and the Workforce Development Arm and that our company would in fact pay a fee for training services, workforce development services based upon a strategic model that is in fact a self-employment initiative model that we didn't invent. It was created actually by the federal government through the Department of Labor. And with that said, I, I would appreciate an opportunity to, to be able to come back before uh, the Board of Trustees. Uh, I will share with you and send to you the, the, the contract offer for both the lease and the contract uh, that is, is really dealing with the workforce development uh, uh, requirements that we need to support our business model that the Center for Entrepreneurship can in fact provide. So it's, it's not rocket science and we're not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything like that. We're trying to leverage these tools that, and assets that we have in our community and create the synergy between the, the, the actually the, the most powerful financial institution in the world, which is the Federal Reserve System. And if, if your support would provide us with the ability to do exactly that and also move uh, 
in our relationship with hopefully the state of Kansas be uh, have the capacity to move uh, those who are on public assistance to self-sufficiency through the self-employment initiative and business model and thank you for this opportunity any of the trustees have any questions of mr. Anderson thank you very much Mr. Chair, I might just, uh, if, if Mr. Anderson's working with Dr. Lindahl and staff, then, you know, I'm sure at some point in time they'll bring a, uh, a analysis or assessment or review or whatever to us. Is that your anticipation? Yeah. Okay. All right, good. Thank you. All right, thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? <coughs> uh, hello. Hi. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank everyone for uh, being here, hearing me out. Uh, my name is Tyler Rowe, and I serve as the student body vice president for KCKCC. Uh, Nashawn Thomas, our president, is uh, offers his apologies for not being able to be here. He is ill. Uh, I wanted to inform you of a few upcoming events. Uh, our next student senate meeting is on April 22nd. The students have requested and continue to request your presence if you're uh, able to allocate the time. Uh, we would appreciate it. <coughs> Uh, we've had two members come to our last meeting, so I would like to extend a thank you to uh, Trustee Ash and Trustee Maddox. I really appreciate it, as well as the rest of the Senate. Uh, our Poetry Slam is taking place on April 24th. Auditions for that, as far as the student body, are taking place, I believe, this week. Uh, we're excited. We hope it'll be an artistic and an educational process. Uh, elections uh, for the, our student body are coming, other student Senate body are coming up and they'll be on April 21st and 22nd We're very excited for the new nominees to have a new voice uh, on the student body and the last thing that I've been asked to address is May 1st will serve as our end of the year bash and we have a lot of ideas uh, planned we have a lot of events and processes that we're very excited about so I mean as I don't have a very long spiel but that's what I wanted to inform you all of and thank you very much well thank you thank you Tyler and thank you for coming this it was morning. a pleasure to be there and yeah. uh, share with the you know the audience that day uh, everyone was very gracious and attentive and and I think Wendell and I both enjoyed it thank you thanks again anyone else uh, wishing to speak to the board this morning <coughs> all right we'll move along to communications Darren Elliott is, is Darren here no. Hi. good morning Darren Uh, good morning. Thank you for having us here today. I've got members of our team and got some of our trophies from the past few weeks and want to talk to you about all of those things. Uh, before the meeting, I talked to Peggy and instead of just leaving these over here, we thought it would be a good idea. I'm going to have them bring a trophy and set it in front of each of you. And then when I'm done talking, if the debaters can get behind you and we can get a picture. Uh, so go ahead and take these up and line them up there and I'll talk about what we've done the last couple of weeks. So. Wheel up there. Um, we've had a number of national tournaments in the last few weeks that we've attended, and so they're going to bring some of the trophies and set them there in front of you. And um, just everybody pick up one and take one. Anthony, right, put that one for the president. Put that one for the president. <laughs> we should have practiced this, I think, maybe. <laughs> okay, so uh, I want to talk first about uh, the National Parliamentary Debate Association National Tournament, uh, which we held here on our campus uh, the middle part of March. Uh, the NPDA National Tournament had 53 schools and about 150 teams on our campus from all over the country. Um, we were one of six community colleges that were in attendance at that tournament. The rest were all four-year schools, so about 47 uh, four-year universities were here on campus. Um, that tournament uh, was here for a three-day period, and at the end of that tournament, uh, the big trophy with a silver cup on top of it is the National Championship Trophy uh, that's in front of Dr. Givens. Uh, and our team of Matt and Anthony uh, won that national tournament. Um, what's <laughs> a couple of things that are impressive about that. The first is that uh, we were the first team of community, or the first community college team to ever get a team past the Sweet 16. 
Um, and so certainly the first to win the national championship. Uh, the team that they defeated in finals, which actually occurred right here in this room and was broadcast live streamed is on the uh, website. Uh, the team that they beat was from Southern Illinois University. Uh, one of those debaters had won this national tournament as a sophomore and as a junior uh, and were kind of the odds on favorite coming into the tournament to win. Uh, the coach of that team is a, a good friend of mine who also happens to be a graduate of Washington High School right here in Wyandotte County. So uh, to have both of our teams in the finals was uh, kind of special for us. Uh, but it was really exciting that they um, were able to win this national championship. As the tournament began, I remember the national committee came in and one of our IT folks asked me, he said, is it going to look bad if you win the tournament when you host it? And I said, well, you know, it's a, there's a long ways to the national championship. And it's, uh, it wasn't even on my mind at that point. It was just hosting the tournament. and. Uh, hoping our teams were successful. Uh, and it was only the second time that the host actually won the tournament. Texas Tech won, I believe, in 2009 when they hosted. Um, so it was great to have it here and to be able to host it. Um, one of the other trophies that's up here in front of um, Trusty Townsend, I believe, is the, that we were the top community college. Uh, and that's based upon how all of your teams do throughout the course of the tournament. Uh, we only had two teams in the tournament. Uh, and a number of the community colleges had three or four, and so our two teams amassed more wins and won the community college championship at that tournament. Um, before I talk about the next tournament, there are some people that I would certainly like to thank. Uh, the tournament, as big as it was, would not be a success without all of the help of the campus and everyone supporting us. Um, on Saturday night, we had a debate. Uh, the U.S. team has a debate against the Irish team, uh, and they were out at the uh, hotel, the airport Marriott. Uh, Dr. Givens and Dr. Lindahl came and attended that event. They both got a standing ovation, in fact, for uh, being there and uh, being supportive. Um, everybody on campus that pitched in, uh, uh, our dean, of course, Dr. Walker, for all of her support. Uh, Mr. Wynn came and watched some of the debates and was uh, a fan of some of the people he got to hang out with and talk to. And he even watched our semifinal debate. And uh, it was interesting that he went back to his office and he sent me an email about what he thought of the debate and why he thought we would win the debate on a five to two decision. There were seven judges. And then when the decision came in, we had won the debate and it was a five to two decision for us. So decided that if I want to uh, maybe stay home, I'll just send uh, Mr. Wynn on tournaments for me. And <laughs> he can do some coaching. Um, our IT folks uh, did an amazing job. Everybody uh, from everywhere in the country talked about how amazing it was here with the internet. There was another national tournament right after ours where the first round of the tournament was delayed by an hour because the internet went down and people couldn't get online and folks were calling me or texting me saying, can you bring your IT people over to this campus? Because <laughs> uh, we'd like to get the uh, internet working. Uh, of course, our buildings and grounds folks, and then media services, uh, for all they did, they videotaped a lot of the debates. Uh, I told them that the awards ceremony was scheduled to start at 7. It started at about 10.30. Uh, they stayed here through that and, and videotaped all of that. And so uh, a big thank you to everybody that made that tournament happen. I think they all deserve a big round of applause. <laughs> Uh, it's nice when you leave, uh, when people are leaving your campus, they ask you to host again. And uh, people have asked, when are you going to host nationals again? And I said, I'm going to sleep for about a year, and then I'll think about it. <laughs> um, the next tournament we attended was the CETA National Tournament at Wichita State, uh, which was the weekend right after that. Um, this is the 10th time in uh, 12 years that we won the Community College National title in the CETA organization. Um, and that's in front of uh, Trustee Maddox. And then, uh, we also had the team of, uh, so Matt switched partners for that tournament and debated with Nicole. And uh, <laughs> uh, Matt and Nicole had an amazing tournament. Um, the CETA National Tournament had 130 teams competing. Um, we're the only community college to have a team advance the elimination rounds. Uh, and the top 64 teams advance. Oh, the top 64 teams advance, and um, they made it to the final four. Uh, which was the farthest a community college team had ever advanced at the CETA National Tournament. Uh, Matt and Nicole also were both named CETA All-Americans. Uh, only 30 students in the entire country uh, received that award, and wow. they both received an All-American award. Uh, and then finally, um, the organization presented uh, a posthumous Alumni of the Year Award to one of our alumni. Uh, you may remember earlier this year we lost one of our alumni um, Aaron Thomas and uh, the CETA organization rec recognized him for not only his work with uh, the folks that he's been working with in Debate Kansas City, which is the Urban Debate League, uh, but the help he had done coaching at both Lincoln Prep High School and some of the coaching that he had been doing here right before he um, passed away. And so uh, they presented that award to him, which was nice, and I actually have it here, and I'm going to have his mom out sometime to present it to her. 
Um, and so she was very touched by that. Uh, so the CETA National Tournament was a great uh, tournament for us as well. Right after the CETA National Tournament, we had about a week off and we went to the University of Iowa uh, for the NDT. This is the national debate tournament that is kind of like the equivalent of the NCAA basketball tournament. You have to qualify to it. 76 teams in the country get invited uh, through a qualification process uh, or through an invitation process for the 16 teams. Um, we're the first community college to qualify to that tournament four years in a row uh, in the history of that tournament dating all the way back to the 1940s. Um, we were the first community college to ever get two teams to the national debate tournament in the same year. Uh, so in addition to Matt and Nicole, <coughs> Uh, Anthony and Brian, who couldn't be here today, uh, got in. You may remember in March I said they were the first alternate team. Yes. Two nights before the tournament started, I got a phone call from the director that said, we had a team that had to pull out. Is your team wanting to come? Uh, can you call them and let me know? And I said, well, I don't even need to call them. I can tell you that they will be there. They had still been working, and so I did call them that night, and then I found out later after I called them at 10 o'clock, they had a practice round at about midnight that night to get ready to go. So um, so we had two teams that were uh, qualified to the NDT, and Matt and Nicole made it to elimination rounds of that tournament as well. I made it to the top 32 and were the first uh, community college team to make it to elimination rounds at that tournament since the early 1980s. So that was uh, great. Uh, that was great for them to do that. I have a note here. Aha. Thank you. So I mentioned that we were at the CETA National Tournament prior to uh, the NDT, uh, and that's the Cross-Examination Debate Association. So there are two different organizations. Uh, the policy debate and then the parliamentary debate. And so parliamentary debate is what the national, uh, the NPDA is, and that's what I talked about first. Um, and so at the NDT, uh, they made it to elimination rounds, and uh, so that was a great accomplishment for them. Uh, I can tell you that this has been by far the most successful year for the program in the 13 years that I've been here. Uh, the last four weeks with the amount of teams that we've had make it to late elimination rounds at national tournaments uh, that no other community college has ever come close to doing. And to do that all in one year uh, says a lot about these students. Finally, at about 4 a.m. Monday morning, we returned from Cleveland, uh, where we competed at the community college national tournament, Fire Pie. Uh, and at that tournament, uh, that is just community colleges. There were 58 community colleges in attendance from all over the country. Uh, and we had um, a number of awards. The first is, uh, this marks the 12th year in a row that we've won a debate division at that tournament. So all 12 years that we've been going to that national tournament, uh, we've won one of the debate divisions. Um, and Anthony took third in Lincoln Douglas debate, which is a one-on-one -on -one format person of debate. And then Nicole and John both um, took first at the national tournament in the Lincoln Douglas debate. So they were the, they've continued our streak of 12 years uh, of winning that in a row. Uh, we also, um, uh, John also received one of the student fellowship awards. There are about 400 students competing at that tournament, and the tournament recognizes eight of them as representing the best there is in terms of quality of performance, but also in quality of character, and, and present fellowship awards to eight different students. And so John received uh, one of those, which was great. Alex received an award of merit for helping out at that tournament and helping run the tournament. Um, and then uh, Liz competed at that tournament, and Tyler uh, competed at that. Everybody up here competed at that tournament, except Alex helped uh, with the tournament administration. And then uh, Tyler and John, um, competed at the AFA National Tournament, which is the American Forensics Association, uh, where they competed in individual events and duo interpretation of literature. And again, we were the, this is the first time in four years we've had people compete at the AFA National Tournament in forensics. So we've had a very successful uh, run in the last four weeks. We've, uh, it's been exciting to win the Community College National title in both NPDA and CETA and Fire Pi, and then win the national championship uh, among uh, NPDA is something that is unheard of. That trophy has the names of all the schools that have won it in the past, and we'll add our name to it. And uh, you'll see it's, a, it's an impressive list of four-year universities, and we were excited to uh, get through that entire field and take them all down this year. So I appreciate you uh, <laughs> giving us time today, but I would like, uh, since you have the trophies there in front of you, if they could come up behind you and we could get a picture taken. Um, and then if um, Mr. Wynn and Dr. Vitali and Dr. Lindahl could come in behind to Dr. Walker, if you would join us, and I'll have someone take our picture. So thank you. Go ahead and line up behind them, and we'll do our picture. All right. <coughs>
Congratulations to the uh, new national uh, debate uh, champions. Kansas City, Kansas City <laughs> College. Is this the, the first oh, community the college to win the NPPA title. Come be a champion with us. Enroll and start making your life better today. So while they're... Did you guys get to see the, did you see the commercial? I'm not sure if they got to Congratulations see Congratulations to the new national Look. debate champions. Kansas City, Kansas Community College. The first community college to win the NPPA title. Come be a champion with us. Enroll and start making your life better today. And then, thank you again. Finally, I'll mention, I, I've talked to Dr. Lindahl, and at some point, we're going to do a, in the next couple of weeks, work on doing a reception for the team. And uh, I wanted to do that not only to congratulate them, but also to thank all the folks on campus that helped support hosting that national tournament. And so as soon as we have a date set for that, we'll make sure you all get the invitation to that so you can come if you'd like to. And uh, congratulate them, but also the people on campus, like I said, because it was without all of that help hosting that tournament would have been impossible so again thank you to all of them and thank you uh, for all of your support and appreciate the time today well thank you for your work uh, you. with this with this program darren uh you continue to impress us and we're extremely proud of you and thank you thank you very much appreciate that thanks Welcome, Dr. Enoki and your group. Good morning, Board of Trustees, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bernadette Vallejos, and I am the secretary, or sorry, the treasurer of um, the Ralph Bunch Society. We uh, would like to congratulate the debate team for all of their achievements and for putting us on the map as Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Uh, we were privileged enough to get the opportunity to go to the Model UN in the later part of March, and we have prepared a presentation of uh, our experience of the Model UN. Okay. We began our journey to the yeah, um, Model UN. <laughs> After much preparation, we were finally on our way to our big event. New York or bust. Model UN, here we come. We have arrived eager to begin our delegations. We began caucusing our positions. We were not permitted to take pictures while in delegation. However, we managed to get a few for our memories. <laughs> Time to put our hard work to use. With over 5,000 students from all over the globe, we all came together for a final resolution on some of the top crises going on today around the world. The Model UN, we were ready for you. Enu, this year's model, New York model, was really challenging as you get to meet students from different universities abroad with very strong opinions on different global issues. Still, one has to find ways to caucus. I successfully I succeeded to rally students representing 23 African nations, and we wrote a solid report with recommendations on how the UN can strengthen its regional arrangements in Africa. Our report was voted by absolute majority to be part of the 2015 report for the committee, Special Committee for Peacekeeping Operations. This is one of the biggest leadership roles I have ever filled. Thought-provoking experience myself. The experience was enriching. To see such a huge world packed in a small place with so many different people and cultures was really enlightening. Sometimes it is easy to forget how really big the world is outside our small community. <laughs> we did not come back empty-handed. 
KCKCC delegation received an honorable mention award in recognition of our outstanding contributions. Seeing New York. For most of us, this was our first time in New York City. Flora. When I saw iconic monuments, the Brooklyn Bridge and the Statue of Liberty in New York City, I wept. I knew, I never knew I would have this opportunity. Cold rain or sun? Nothing could contain our excitement. We wanted to experience it all. Sharita. I choked up when I saw Ground Zero. These are a few pictures of our actual experience. Some were taken at the actual United Nations that we got to tour and visit. Life affirming moments. Micah. Micah, who was flying for the first time, said, my dreams came true, and it is life-changing. I cannot return to Kansas the same. Event was organized by Henry M. Lewis, Center for Global Transitional Justice, and sponsored by Ralph Bunch Society and Students for Global Peace. UN model, coach, and advisor, Dr. Unoki. Thank you, Dr. Unoki, and everyone involved to make this possible for us. Sincerely, the Ralph Bunch and Global Peace students. Hearts are the strongest when they beat in response to noble ideals. Ralph Bunch. We would just like to thank you guys and also share a little bit personally of our experience. Um, it was definitely something that I don't think I would have been better prepared if it weren't for Dr. Unoki. He coached us from the very beginning. He taught us exactly what it was that we needed to expect. And I personally felt very prepared when I was there. It was definitely a moment that I will always remember for the rest of my life. And I thank you so much. I'm going to turn over the mic to my fellow people here. Thank you. Hi, my name is uh, Micah McIntosh. And I am the vice president for Ralph Bunch. Uh, Flores is the president. I'm the VP. And uh, as a, in a PowerPoint, it was my very first time flying. And so I was kind of scared, but, you know, I went through it. And this was my first time going to New York. And as a little girl, you always, you know, want to go places and say stuff out your mouth. Like, I want to go to New York. I want to do this. And I always, you know, told my parents, I want to go to New York, you know, I want to go see, you know, everything they had. And never would I have thought that that dream was going to come true. But when dreams come true, you just think they're for a moment. But I realized that that stuck with me forever. This trip, I mean, was amazing. And then we did stuff I thought we were going to be able to do, like see the Statue of Liberty, you know, get on the tour bus. And Dr. Inoki actually made that happen. So that was just a dream come true. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for the opportunity and for, you know, sponsoring this guy and, you know, encouraging him because <laughs> the truth be told, Dr. Inoki, <laughs> Dr. Inoki gets down a lot, but he always, <laughs> he do, he gets down and say, you know, I don't know what to do, you guys. But we always say, Dr. Inoki, everything's going to be okay, you know. We, you know, we here to encourage him, and he's just, he's just a good, amazing teacher. But the whole experience was just amazing. And not only that, you, you meet different people from, you know, across the world. Like we met this one girl from France, and she was, you know, just like us. And we, you never really, you know, experience another culture until you get to talking to them, you know, knowing their life story. But I mean. As I can say, the trip was just amazing and just, it was just incredible. But my dream came true and um, 
That's all I can say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, I'm Flora Nakatora. As they've reiterated enough, <laughs> I'm the president of Ralph Bunch. I just wanted to briefly say that going on this trip, um, as a girl from Kansas City, a small town, I'd never think that I would be delegating with 5,000 students from Dubois, from France, from all these places. These these children are children, young adults. We're, they're so smart. And to just be coxing with them and to ask me my ideas of what I thought of small regions in Africa and Russia and just places, it was, it was amazing. And to be able to be taken seriously in um, such an event. Um, I, we didn't really get to explain to you guys exactly what the Model UN is, but it's just a mock conference of the United Nations. So, um, and um, that was not a that was not a fib. I actually did cry as we were <laughs> passing under the Brooklyn Bridge, <laughs> and on his shoulders, I cried on his shoulders. I never thought that I would be um, experiencing all the things that I got to experience there. Um, I'd also like to present to. Um, as a gift, as an extension of our gift and appreciation for allowing us to do so. Um, this is actually uh, a gift from the United Nations and for the chairman of the Board of Trustees, the president of the college, and the Dean of Social Sciences. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Flora. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right there, right there. <laughs> Raise your hand, Carol. <laughs> okay. um, my name is Ayongwe Tazu. I am the president of Global Peace. Um, the UN, one intention of the UN model is to see how students from different cultures can um, disagree on several issues but yet, at the end of the day, come to agree on very critical issues that affect the world. So um, in, my, in, my, in my committee, we were talking on how to strengthen regional arrangement between the United Nations and, and the UN, or between the UN and, and Africa. Those are very um, technical issues that some students had very strong opinions about. And some were not really willing to caucus. Some were, they were just willing to pass out their ideas. They were strict on their ideas. But at the end of, uh, um, on the first day, we deliberated for four hours. But we, we, we went nowhere, no agreement, nothing. On the, but on the second day, many students came to understand the reason why we were there. And I want to say that I've attended two models. And those two models have had a huge impact both in my career, I'm a pre-pharmacy major here at, 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 the, at the college. It has had a huge impact both in my career and also in my life goals. Um, last semester, I have applied, I applied in several colleges and I had several offers to, be called, to do pharmacy. One of the offers was from Massachusetts College of Pharmacy and they sent me a letter after about three weeks that they are offering me a $10,000 scholarship annually because of my, because of my leadership roles that I've played back in school and in other aspects in the community. So I was very, I was very happy for the opportunity that I had to maybe participate in this model UN and shared my idea about glo on global issues. Even though the Get Peter Scholarship, KU also offered me a, a, a better position. So I chose the offer from KU School of Pharmacy because I love Kansas and I want to remain in Kansas. So I'm very grateful to the college and to the Board of Trustees for putting us out there for making us to experience what it's like to know what, what happens in the world, to understand how things, because the moment you remain here in the college, you will not understand that there are global issues. You will not understand what other students know. You will not know what maybe other students are thinking about crisis that affects the world. But the moment we go out there, I want to say it's life changing. So I want to encourage us to continue with this U UN model. This is my last semester in the college. And I'll be very excited to, come to be back here maybe in five years. And I see that the model UN students are still participating in it. Students are still going out there and sharing out their views on, what, on, on how global issues can be resolved. 
So I'm very grateful to the college. I'm very grateful to Dr. Onuke. I'm very grateful to the, the, the Board of Trustees for all that which they have done for us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you all for coming this morning. And uh, it was amazing <laughs> hearing about your amazing experience. <laughs> thank you very much. It was that. Okay. William Sixto, you're up. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Uh, I went to Washington High School and I was on the debate team. And I have two degrees from two different universities. And I can tell you that the time spent debating at Washington was the most formulative time for me. And I am just blown away. I am just absolutely blown away by the quality of what we just experienced. Amazing. Mm. Anyway, to kind of carry out that forward, uh, we, have, we are just now finishing up the commissioning aspects of our energy project. And we're finishing up the second round of internships. And so I wanted to present to you our two interns and let them briefly describe their experiences to you. Diego Hernandez and Colin Ford. Hi, everybody. As he said, I'm Colin Ford. I'm a student here at KCKCC. In the fall, I plan to transfer to UMKC, where I'll be pursuing mechanical engineering. Good morning to you all. My name is Diego Hernandez. I'm also a student here at KCKC. I'm actually graduating and getting my associate's degree on drafting design, and I'm also planning on attending UMKC in the fall for my architect degree. All right, well, first, we'd like to thank, stop and thank Don Kufakis and Katie Mouthrop. Without them, we would not be here today. They are the ones that hired us on for this internship, so they are not here, but we'd still like to thank them. Uh, during one of the first weeks um, with Optera, we got to meet with Kevin Karst. He's a construction manager uh, with Optera. He took us around the campus, um, showed us the boiler room in there with the uh, new VFDs they put in. He uh, opened up that water chiller there and showed us the fan inside. We got to go to the lower jewel um, down below us here and see the air handling unit. And then, of course, this school transferred from electricity over to natural gas, and that is one of the main gas meters there. Uh, he also took us up on the top of the field house. Um, <laughs> terrific view from up there. I love heights. I don't know about you guys, but I was enjoying it. And uh, we saw the new rooftop units that now, of course, run on natural gas instead of electricity. And I'm going to pass it over to Diego. Uh, after that, we were with the uh, inside a house team and Optera called the Promise Keepers. Uh, they were made up with uh, Gary Reams, Aaron Tarjan, and Steve Schulte. During this part of this industry, we work with the utility vision program just, uh, just basically monitors the, uh, the building of the customer, uh, making sure that they follow the agreements that Optera proposed to them and follow, and just to make sure they follow the rules that they were supposed to follow so they can keep their goals of what we're supposed to do. Uh, so there were several areas during this internship, during this part of the internship. One was the gateway device, which basically was the most important part of the um, section. Why? Because during the gateway device, it just basically a um, uh, tra transmitter between the uh, the customer's building to Optera. With this gateway device, it let us communicate what was happening at uh, the customer's building, letting them know they were following rules that. Uh, energies was being safe and things of that nature. And then another part was the monthly report, just basically showing Optera that the customers was following what Optera, Optera told them to do, uh, showing that they were saving money each month, they were saving um, electricity and things like that. Uh, finally, we work with the alarms. They basically just inform us that uh, there was any problems occurring in the customer's building and needed to be fixed and or needed any uh, inside assistance with any of our uh, mechanical engineers or any of our um, any of our uh, any any just any mechanical problems. That's just basically our arms. And then here's uh, the gateway device. Those that those right there are different kind of gateway device that we Optera uses with several customers. 
And those are really important that I'll kind of learn a lot of, about it. And that's it. All right, yeah, and those keep getting smaller every year, too. So that's really good. <laughs> uh, we got to get a marketing overview of Optera with uh, Steve Spurgeon and Sue Teagarden. Um, Steve explained <coughs> to me, this actually gave me a, a great overview of how the company actually goes about finding potential clients. Uh, they use a site called Onvia, and the client will put their uh, project out on Onvia, and then Steve will find it, and if it's applicable for one of the branches of Optera around the country, he will then send it to one of them, those BDMs, depending on the region. Um, there were a lot of acronyms that I learned, <laughs> and I'm sure I have a lot more to learn as well. But uh, those are the main four. BDM is Business Development Manager. I'm sure you guys have heard that one before. Um, RFP, Request for Proposal. RFQ, Request for Qualification, and SOQ down there. Another section about this internship was modeling with uh, Jared Drew, who's a project engineer. When I heard modeling the first time, I was like, oh man, I'm excited for this. Since I'm graduating drafting design, I was thinking, hey, we could, we're going to create something with our hands or any kind of design in the computer. But in reality, it was kind of completely different. During modeling, we used a program called Train System Analyzer that basically um, let us do comparison between two, um, two fixtures, saying kind of like the, a boiler, uh, AC unit, or things like that. Uh, an exercise we did was in Atlanta, Georgia. It was just an exercise, it was not a real project. We kind of saw how, um, how long would it take for a customer to, to get their money back and how much money they will be producing each year after they <coughs> change those fixtures. So modeling after I got the hang of it, it was really interesting. Not only because I learned how, how much money was involved during this project, but uh, also a new, a new system that I learned how to use now. So modeling was really interesting after I learned it. And that's uh, Jerry Drew, the first guy in the Y, and then uh, who's a project engineer, and Aaron Cox, who's the one in the back. They were both working really hard. Yeah, I caught him off guard with that picture. It was pretty funny. Um, uh, we got to go over lighting with Brandon Wells. He's an energy analyst with Optera. And Brandon's main job is to make sure that all the light fixtures that need to be replaced are replaced and to get a head count of all of those, uh, as, as well as many other things that he does. But one of the tools is Google uh, Earth. And that helps him a lot because he gets to, you know, we can sit down in a cubicle anywhere in the world and view the project and actually zoom in, try and, you know, find these lights, what, what type are they, how many watts are they, all of that. Uh, Cree is one of the leading um, distributors that we use at Optera. And here's an overview. All right, so during this internship, there was a lot of challenge, personally, for me. Why? Um, because I didn't know nothing about energy services, nothing of pro, um, mechanical engineer. Unlike Colin, he got a lot of um, already mentality on this side of program. Uh, so yeah, basically, uh, there was a lot of challenge. Uh, personally, I was not able to keep up with Colin and the staff members. I was always one step behind. When they were talking, I, I was like, what are they even saying? I did not <laughs> understand a single thing that they were saying. But as time moves on, I was catching up with them, trying to keep up with them. So yeah, there was a lot of challenges during this internship. And this internship is not only going to help me to finish school, but uh, also to um, have a real world experience. Because now I will have like a step, a step ahead of any other person of what a, people are expecting of me when I graduate, what type of work am I expect to do, and most important, importantly, to be a uh, time management. Uh, because time management uh, taught me that I have to be always on time. I had to turn in things on time. I can't be behind because if I, if I get behind on work, it's gonna mess me up, and and I just have to be on time, especially. And I want to thank the Optera and you guys for giving us time to, to present to you guys and to the Optera because they gave us t time of their own to show us what kind of work they were doing during Optera. So I want to thank all of you guys again. Yeah, there were uh, many challenges that we faced over the last eight weeks. Um, getting to come on campus here and see this whole system and how they put it in and all the lights and, and how the actual system works, um, everything that they had to replace. Uh, and reintegrates and, and all that was was really cool. 
um, and, and fun to learn about. Uh, there were a lot of tests that we had to go through um, at Optera, any anywhere from lighting to um, lighting to uh, let's see um, different types of uh, equations for heating and, and all that kind of stuff. We we had to learn all of that. Uh, usually about two tests per week, and we had we were tested over that type of material. So it was fun. It was a great learning experience. Um, it's definitely going to help me in the future. I now have a great foundation of the business world and how you know, it actually works in in the field. You know what you what you're expected to do, and and uh, I, I just had a great time. It was an amazing experience. So I'd like to thank Bill Sixta, along with the rest of the employees at Optera, and I'd like to thank all of you for having us today. So thank you. Thank you. I'd like to make one other brief announcement. This is our second batch of, of interns. And uh, Optera has offered, and he has accepted a full-time position. So Colin Ford will be working for us um, as a full-time employee after, after his student days here at the community college. And I think that's what, you know, the internships are, are, are a phenomenal tool, and that simply articulates that wonderful meshing of here I am as a student, here I am as a business, how does it mesh? We see opportunity, we see potential, and that's ultimately what it's all about. So we are very pleased to announce that uh, Colin has accepted a position with us full time. Wow, that's great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Any questions? Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Any questions from all uh, of you? I would have a <laughs> question for Bill. This is our okay. second group, and we're really proud of who's been a part of this. I just wonder if do you get any female applicants for these positions? You know, uh, we didn't, and, and yeah. uh, uh, we are a uh, uh, diverse group. Right. I just appreciate your work on this and your diversity, and hopefully in the future we'll we'll have a female applicant that'll come in and, and do sure. well. Because I, I will tell you that there may be another opportunity. We are, we were asked by uh, uh, Cliff Smith to look at all the the balance of the campus that we haven't touched previously mm -hmm. to see if there's a value proposition that we can move forward on. Yeah. And so we're developing that, and and if that comes to pass, and we work on that in the future, I think I think that uh, the idea of that happens would be a very, very positive thing. Absolutely. So, so I'm really proud of these guys. This was not a, uh, uh, this wasn't donuts and coffee. This was coming to work every day in a very <laughs> professional environment and, and, uh, and uh, putting them through their paces. So we're very proud of them. Well, we're proud of them all. I just want to I thank donuts. you two guys for being such great representatives of our college and uh, going through the program and being very successful. So just thanks for your, uh, your good work on this. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yep. Thanks again. Yeah. Okay, I have the honor to read a resolution regarding the consumption of alcohol liquor at the uh, April 23rd Vocal Jazz Cabaret Fundraiser. And uh, this is a resolution regarding consumption of alco alcoholic liquor in accordance with KSA 41-719, paragraph I, whereas Kansas State Annotated 41-719, paragraph C, prohibits the consumption of alcoholic liquor on public property except where expressly permitted by law, and whereas the Kansas City, Kansas Community College is authorized under Kansas law to exempt from the provisions of KSA 41719 paragraph C specified property which is under the control of the KCKCC Board of Trustees and which is not used for classroom instructions. Now thereby or therefore uh, be it resolved by the Board of KCKCC section 1 KCKCC hereby exempts for Thursday April 23rd 2015 from 6 to 8.15 p.m. the upper 
level jewel from the requirements of KSA 41-719 paragraph C. Section two, this exemption is granted in connection with the holding of the 2015 Vocal Jazz Cabaret Fundraiser for the KCKCC Music Club. Passed and approved by the uh, board of KCKCC in a meeting held on April 14, 2015. Do I have a motion to approve the resolution? Mr. Chairman, before you do that, I might ask the trustees if the details of, of that resolution are, are correct and if and if maybe there's a ministerial area and that the the event is actually the, the Hall of Fame at the Tech Center or am I or am I incorrect? Are there both of them? There are two. Yeah, two. And okay. so we need both of them. All right, then. Th then, Mr. Chairman, your attorney says that the matter is ready for your action. Aye. Motion to approve. Resolution. Move, move, to move to approve. Second. We moved and seconded to approve the resolution. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The president has an announcement. I received a notice of resignation from the president CEO of KBOR this week. Colleagues, I am writing to let you know that I informed the Kansas Board of Regents today of my intention to retire at the end of June 2015. It has been an incredible honor and privilege to have served in this role and to have known and worked with you. Thanks for your support and encouragement during my tenure at KBOR. I look forward to working with you during the remaining two and a half months. Thank you. Andy Tompkins, President, CEO, KBOR. Wow. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I need a motion to go into executive session to discuss non-elected personnel matters to protect the privacy interests of the individuals to be discussed for consul and for consultation on matters protected by attorney-client privileges. Uh, how much time do we need? 15 minutes, Mr. Chairman. The president saying 30. 30 minutes, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Up to. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to go in the executive session. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah. We're in executive session. Let's take a five minute break and meet in the boardroom. There's science for you. And how many won the World Call Series? Call the meeting back into session and move into the New York uh, fan? president's Me? report. I'm not a baseball And with that report, we're going to see some, some videos. for drinking beer. Congratulations to the new national debate champions. Kansas City, Kansas Community College. The first community college to win the NPPA title. Come be a champion with us. Enroll and start making your life better today. This campus is so diverse. You can look around and find someone from every walk of life. I know I belong here. It's amazing. Enroll at Kansas City, Kansas Community College and start making your life better today. Well, it's a great feeling to have high quality education without worrying about cracking debt. The college is really easy to get to. It only took me about five minutes to get here on the metro. Thanks to the small class sizes, I felt like I always had access to the instructor. They made my life better. They can make your life better too. Kansas City, Kansas Community College, the most progressive, forward thinking, forward looking, forward moving, entrepreneurial community college in the entire state of Kansas and beyond. Start making your life better today. As you watch TV, you will see those like that. like on channel 41, 41. right? 38, 38, 38 the spot. 38 38. Is that a television station? Yeah. It's, clo <laughs> <laughs> it's close to 41, it but it's a little 41. short. Oh, we did the filming there, but channel 38. That's what I thought. Okay, don't confuse me. Okay. <laughs> All right. But anyway, you'll see us on TV. Those were three separate, and we're going to do more. But we began with those. So we're out there. And I understand that we would just did a filming just now for MTV. So we will be on MTV also. That's music television. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who's, who's performing on that thing. Oh. Dr. Walker is singing. Or <laughs> 
we do an MTV? Dr. Oh, Lindahl and Dr. Dr. Walton. Walton. Are rapping or yeah, something? Yeah, she's rapping, yeah. <laughs> but as you can see, we have been very busy in moving Kansas City, Kansas Community College forward. In addition to our student success, uh, as you saw in our presentations today, we are fast approaching the end of the year, and that's, that's hard to realize. I mean, we're talking about graduation, and we're ordering caps and gowns, and we're talking about when the different graduations are. I mean, we're talking about the, all of the end, of end of the year activities. So it's happening much faster than we thought. I'd invite all of you to take a look at the new fence that we have along the, I don't know, is that the front of the college? West side. On the west, west side. side. If you look along there, all of that debris has been cleared away. And we are, the fence is probably close to being uh, finished. Uh, we are very excited about that. We partnered with the UG and with the KCK Police Department. Um, you, have, you may have seen it on Facebook. It's up on Facebook. Uh, you can check it out. There it is. Oh, there are pictures. Mm -hmm. That's how it looked before. And? <laughs> uh, no after before. yet, but that's before. before. <laughs> we'll get to after. Okay. Our goal is to be omnipresent and to truly be moving forward, as we say all the time. We are forward thinking, forward moving, forward acting, and entrepreneurial. And all of this is part of what we're trying to do. We want to look like we are who we say we are. So we're looking at, at ways to clean, clean up the campus and improve our grounds and make them beautiful. So this is part of that process. Um, KC, KCC will be present at the community America Ballpark. You know where that is? It's the stadium. The ball, ball team stadium. T-Bone Stadium. Yes. yes. We're going to have a KC. You can tell how much I know about sports. <laughs> we're going to have a, but I do know this, we're going to have a KCKCC night at the ballpark. And the details will be coming soon. And somebody from the college will throw out the first ball. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our team uh, attended the annual Higher Learning uh, Commission uh, meeting in Ch conference in Chicago uh, two weeks ago, and we learned uh, s some of the things that have caused us to come back and, and work a little harder, and some details we've learned we need to tie up. But uh, we are moving close to being fully prepared for the HLC visit that is in November. I know it's the first part of November, like the 14th, 12th, 19th. 9th. 9th. 10th. 9th. 10th. Yeah. 10th and 11th. I knew it was before Thanksgiving because they asked me when did I want it. And I knew it had to be before Thanksgiving because after Thanksgiving, uh, you know, we move on to the holidays and it's just, uh, it would just be too much to put it off for too late. Um, Dr. Vitale, Dr. Men, Dr. Lindahl, and I attended the HLC. Um, for the board, we're going to have your budget workshop. Uh, Peggy will be uh, sending you some possible dates so we can go ahead and schedule that and get that budget workshop done. Uh, I'll be leaving for AACC uh, uh, Thursday um, in, in uh, where is it, San Antonio, <laughs> Texas. That's it. So I'll be gone until Wednesday of next week uh, in San Antonio at the National uh, American Association of Community Colleges. Uh, there are some dates that the board needs to be aware. I've got them all here. I won't read them all but they are available on in your uh, your ebooks the one that uh, huh? on your ipad so if you want to know what the dates are for all the events or if you'd like for me to send them to you over email i'll be happy to do that too when i send your when i send your other information and i think that's all thank you I need a motion to approve the president's report. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to approve the president's report. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Mm -hmm. Dr. Vitale. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, um, sir. Uh, as you hopefully are aware, there was an amendment to my report uh, that was submitted yesterday and, and approved earlier by the board, and that is uh, <clears throat> in March, the board approved a $30 
technology fee uh, on a per student per semester basis and would like to come back to the board now and revisit that and ask that the board rescind that technology fee and re and in its stead approve a technology fee of seven dollars per credit hour I move that we rescind the uh, action of the Board of Trustees of March 10 2015 second okay you heard the motion all in favor aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries move approval of changing uh, our technology fee to seven dollars per credit hour 